also known as Super Duper Kyle, is a rapper who went viral for his song I Spy featuring Lil Yachty, which racked up nearly a billion streams on Spotify alone and has gone eight times platinum. Following that, he released a couple of other songs that garnered hundreds of millions of streams, and it seemed like Kyle was super successful. But not too long after his massive success, Kyle seemingly disappeared. People stopped talking about him and his music, and his massive buzz seemed to have vanished. But to understand how Kyle became popular so quickly and then lost that hype even faster, we gotta go back to the beginning. Kyle was born in LA and started making music when he was young, dropping a bunch of mixtapes from 2009 to 2012 under the names Kid Cash and KID, or Kid or whatever, whatever he used to call himself. He used to make your more run-of-the-mill average style of rap and he said himself it didn't really fit his vibe. So all he used to rap about was just guns, selling drugs and shit, and then I noticed like I was always writing fire-ass bars, but yet nobody liked any of my songs mm. and like my friends and shit were hella straight up with me so i would play them some shit that worked hella long and then i knew it was fire then you'd be like this shit is trash mm -hmm. and i was always wondering like damn why and then i noticed it's like because nobody can really relate to it they can't relate to it because they haven't lived that shit and they can't relate to it because it doesn't even sound real coming out of my mouth right eventually he changed his name to super duper kyle saying the super duper part is because i'm also aware that i can do anything there is no impossibility i'm a superhero and i can save my own day as well as others with the power i have from this music and the power of being kind to people i'm mentioning this for a reason so keep that in mind but kyle shifted his style from your everyday drugs and guns raps to talking about things he actually did in his life along with shooting to be more positive in his music because i had like kid cuddy and you know what I'm saying? And Wiz Khalifa and Drake and people like that to show me that you don't really have to be super hard in mm -hmm. order to be a rapper. But I feel like Tyler and Our Future was one of the first things that showed me like really having a f personality and like putting all of your weird shit into your music was okay too. Mm. You know what I mean? It was with Tyler that, that did that. So this was Kyle's mission with his music, to be more positive, to put his personality into his music, and to be very genuine. Also, at some point along the way, he just started going by Kyle. In 2013, he independently released his debut mixtape, Beautiful Loser, which saw some decent success and today has multiple songs with tens of millions of streams. Kyle was getting some buzz, made some connections with artists featured in a g Easy music video, and he was coming up. In 2015, he followed up with another mixtape called Smile Mile, which saw way more success. This album peaked at 76 on the Billboard 200, had a feature from Chance the Rapper, and has the song Don't Wanna Fall In Love, which has hundreds of millions of streams. Kyle was finally cracking into the mainstream, and he was smart too, because despite having all of this success, he decided to stay independent, at least for now. It was shortly after this run that I found out about his music, and I was like 14 at the time, and I really liked his songs. When I was 14, songs like King Wavy with g Easy were like the coolest thing to me. Also, I gotta shout out Doubt It, that was my favorite song for probably Probably a year I thought it was so cold and that single did pretty well too garnering like tens of millions of streams but I'm saying this to point out the type of music that he made which I'll bring up later regardless things were about to take off even more for Kyle in December of 2016 he released his hit single I spy which went super viral the song featured Lil Yachty and I'd honestly be surprised if you guys haven't heard this song it has nearly 1 billion streams on Spotify peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and eventually went eight times platinum it even got a remix from Kodak Black which I don't think I've ever heard and I don't know if I ever want to. That's not shade at Kodak, by the way. I just, I can't imagine him on that song and I don't think it would be good. The song I Spy really fit the vibe he was going for with the pop rap, positive, realistic vibe that he was talking about. I mean, the chorus is literally, I spy with my little eye, a girly I can get because she doesn't get too many likes. A curly headed cutie I can turn into my wife. Very innocent and uh, lovely chorus right there. Regardless, when that song blew up, he was able to sign a record deal with Atlantic Records in February of 2017. Later, he was featured on the XXL 2017 Fresh class cover alongside X, Ugly God, Made in Tokyo, Amine, Playboy Cardi, A Boogie, and more. Kyle was blown up and he had multiple songs that started coming out featuring people like Made in Tokyo, Ty Dolla Sign, Miguel, and others. In 2018, he released a single Playing With Me with Kehlani and that song did insanely well. It didn't do as well as his hit song I Spy, but it did garner a few hundred million streams on Spotify and eventually it went platinum. This song was one of the singles for his debut studio album Light of Mine, which had features from artists such as 2 Chainz, Khaled, and more. This album also eventually went platinum. Around this time, Billboard described Kyle as one of hip-hop's handful of more happy-go-lucky rappers, and that was a great description of his overall vibe. Kyle was on top of the world, 
And he even got to be the main character in a movie called The After Party. Although it did have terrible reviews, so maybe that hurt his on top of the world feeling a little bit. And after 2018, things seemed to slow down a little bit for Kyle. He released the deluxe to Light of Mine, which didn't do super great in 2019. Then in 2020, he released his next album, See You When I'm Famous, with features from artists like Rich the Kid, Rico Nasty, Trippy Red, Ian Dior, Bryson Tiller, Tyga, and plenty more. And even with all of those features, it didn't do nearly as well as his previous projects. It did place at 124 on the Billboard 200, and I'm not saying it did bad, but his numbers definitely started declining. And after this album that came out during the COVID lockdown, Kyle seemed to start falling out of the public eye. In a Billboard article, they seemed to attribute the lack of success on his previous album to the COVID lockdown, and Kyle did too. He said, I was being so meticulous with trying to make that album perfect, and in my eyes, that is still the best thing I've ever done. But that shit really hurt me, because it totally did not react in the way that I was expecting it to. Billboard also said, like many artists with new projects that year, he felt it didn't reach its potential due to it being released during the pandemic. Because in the middle of that pandemic, it was like, damn, life really sucked. At least from, I know for everybody, but like from my own personal experience, like I was really, really hating, hating life. I just dropped See You When I'm Famous. Mm -hmm. It's like in the middle of the pandemic. I can't go tour. I can't go do shit for it. Right, 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 right. Like many other artists who weren't super gigantic with huge fan bases, he really suffered from the pandemic because he wasn't able to tour or promote his album like he normally would have been if there wasn't a pandemic. And like I said, the album hit 124 on the Billboard 200, but it was only up there for a week. He released a few singles throughout 2020 and 2021 and was getting millions of streams per song, but they weren't going super crazy. Kyle said himself he wasn't feeling like himself with the music. He said, I have not felt like myself now for some time. I felt like I was getting pulled in every direction and I had zero control of what what means the most to me, my art. It is important to me that I give you all the best of me. On top of that, one of the main reasons he was seemingly disappearing was because he was also having label issues. He said in his Billboard interview, I think I lost control over my art due to the expectations and the pressure that surrounded my specific deal. When I Spy happened, I had this massive record and there was this expectation surrounding the label that, oh, this is the kind of records that he's going to make and he's going to do it like a factory again and again and again. And you get in a cycle of attempting that and I realize my art is no longer being dictated by what I just think is cool you're chasing i'm chasing some record. sort of smash yeah and especially for me the smash record they want me to chase is like a diamond song like yeah you know what i mean the label issues coupled with the pandemic really seemed to hinder the momentum he had from like the past five years no like shade to them at all because my time working with atlantic was awesome mm -hmm. but i just realized i'm like oh financially it makes way more sense for me to just do this thing myself because that's all they're asking me to do anyways. Just be you and hopefully some pops off. But if it doesn't pop off, we're gonna be like, ah, disappointed, you know what I'm saying? So Kyle went independent in 2021 and got back to the music grind. His first order of business was doing something that I don't think did his career any favors. And that's when he released his next album, It's Not So Bad as an NFT. He tweeted, it's not so bad, my fifth project, January 28th. Instead of splitting the royalties with the label, I'll be selling this project as an NFT to give an opportunity for my fans to own this project with me. We're in this together forever and ever. When asked what his fans thought about it, he said, I think a lot of my fans don't even necessarily know what it is or how to grasp it, but I think there's a little bit of a learning curve and it's going to be a process for people to really understand it. But I think it's good that it just exists. Although I'm not sure how true that is because if you look at some of the responses to him promoting it, people were saying things like, hell no, f NFTs. Boo. Super disappointed to see this man. Kyle, why? Now I'm not an NFT guy, but I think what this means when you turn an album into an NFT is when you buy the nft supposedly when someone streams the album you're going to get a share of the revenue or some of the royalties however i have no idea if anyone ever got paid all i can find are some comments of people asking when they got their shares distributed or asking when they will get any news from the company opulus that he partnered with this company also has a pretty bad rating on is this coin a scam.com so something shady may have gone down although like i said i don't really know anything about the nft world so i could be wrong and i also could find like no information on this at all so i'm not going to say it was a scam but it was definitely a little fishy and what i can say for sure is that it was not a good look and it didn't seem like many fans were into this idea and on top of all that the album in general just had really poor reviews but that wasn't it for kyle kyle had an issue and it was that him and his music were kind of corny 
or at least that's what people were saying. For example, when discussing his album See When I'm Famous, the top comment on the Reddit post is, I'm just surprised he made it this far. And someone responded, facts, also surprised his music is in total garbage. Now, I used to really like Kyle when I was younger, and while doing the research for this video and watching interviews, he does seem like a super great guy, so this is no shade to Kyle. I respect the positive vibe he tries to push, and I do still like a few of his tracks, but his music seems very appropriate to the time that it came out in. Like a lot of us are probably a little too old to be singing I Spy in 2024, you know what I'm saying? Now that I think about it, some of his bars from that era just weren't the greatest. Like on Doubt It when he said, fire spitting kid who you kid and I would flame your ass. Call of Duty champion, do you know who you're aiming at? That verse went crazy when I was 15, don't get me wrong, but not so much anymore. Sunny Baby made a great video on TikTok explaining Kyle's strange spot in the hip hop slash pop rap space, which really sums up what I'm trying to say here. So I was in Kyle's live yesterday and a lot of people kept saying that he fell off. And for me personally, I would just have to disagree because I don't really think he was ever really on. Yes, I know Kyle's had Billboard charting hits. He is a platinum recording artist and he's been in the game for a pretty long time now. If you guys remember a few years back, him and Yachty had that I Spy record, which was just a massive hit. But like I said, he's been in the game for a while now and I don't really think I've ever really met anybody that's been part of his fan base. Like it seems like he's there, but no one really seems to take notice until he just comes out with a really big, massive commercial hit. When speaking to people about Kyle, they kind of get like this token like vibe. And it kind of just seems that he's very commercially successful, but not culturally. I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of his music, but he's obviously a fantastic artist. I just feel throughout the duration of his career, something's missing. But you tell me, what do you think of Kyle? The comments on this video also help sum up how people feel about him. Kyle represents this weird space in pop rap where a lot of people consider him corny when really he's just more pop than rap. And another person called him Walmart Chance the Rapper. Now, if you guys aren't locked in on the, on the whole hip hop space, a lot of people think Chance the Rapper is also pretty corny. So just not a great look. And if we think back to earlier when I was talking about having super duper in his name and talking about being a superhero with the positivity in his music, I think that's a cool thing. There's nothing wrong with saying that. But like in rap, a lot of fans are not going to f*** with that. And just the fact that he was so positive, like I mentioned earlier, wasn't necessarily the most helpful look. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being positive, but a lot of people, especially nowadays, think that positivity can be a little corny, especially in the rap space. Believe it or not, I think Adam22 summed it up pretty well in his interview with Kyle. On a pop culture level, it seems like the positive message a lot of times needs to sort of be like spoon fed to people along with like, well, look at all of this bullshit that I've come out of. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I was a crazy ass alcoholic for 10 years and now look at me and that people yeah. are very much able to to like appreciate that but somehow like when you are coming into it and you're just positive it's like it can be harder to get people to sort of like bite into that There's, well because they don't they don't understand yeah. they don't understand and that everybody has their struggles even if it's not a really really in your face struggle yeah like being even, a if you're, even if you're keeping it together on top of that he had some tiktok snippets recently that sort of went viral for being not that great so i decided to make a philly club song today <laughs> listen look 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 look, look. Why? I like I feel so bad, bro. Like, bro is not made to come back. Uh, like, this is fucking trash, Kyle. For real, Kyle, you are way too old to be doing this. Haven't seen bro since broccoli. Kyle is little dicky for the black community. I hope that she light skin. I just heard her say nigga. Yo, I feel so bad because it's like I feel like it's not that bad. You guys know how Instagram Reels comments are and people were not feeling these snippets. The songs he was previewing had the same type of lyricism as his 2016 tracks, which isn't great when a lot of your fans have grown up and aren't trying to hear that anymore. He also said his label didn't have the best marketing strategies, but it seems like after going independent, he hasn't been able to come up with something better. My marketing advice from people I was working with was to do this. You like, know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, wow, you're getting paid for this? And they're yeah, getting, no shit. They're getting yeah. paid a lot for that, right. you know? So after COVID hurting the launch of one of his albums, pressures from his label, then releasing an album as an NFT and going independent, Kyle's career has definitely suffered a couple of blows. And this can be seen in the numbers on his latest album, Smile Again, where most of the songs didn't crack a million plays on Spotify. And you know how you can Google most mainstream artist albums and see the first week's sales? I couldn't really find him for this one. And honestly, I actually like this album. I mean, I like WAP Dad. 4,000 a lot, and you can't go wrong with the Tizo touchdown feature. Along with that, I think the production was pretty dope too, but the project did not do too well commercially. However, while many fans think Kyle may have fallen off, it seems like he's had a different approach to the music industry as of late. If you guys have ever heard of the thousand true fans ideology, that seems to be what he's practicing. He's focusing more on his core fan base by live streaming on Twitch, starting a Patreon, and doing other things like this. What you mean? And so I think the name of the game now is really 
focusing on your micro fan base, right? Your super, fan base super is Super serving this. them, yeah. Your fan base is this. My right. fan base is this. Like, I'm a very famous person. Like, yeah. when I walk... Yeah, your monthly listeners are fucking huge on yeah, Spotify. When I walk down the street, like, people are going to recognize me type shit. That's, Visually, that's you're also very unique. People are like, oh, it's the guy with the gray hair. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him on Netflix. Like, yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Yo. Yeah. So, it's here. And then... But I can't focus on this in today's world. Right? I have to focus on this. This smaller amount of people that are really into everything I do. I need engaged. to engaged. Engaged. I need to super serve them. They're buying merch. They're they're buying everything. The they're, they're keeping things afloat. I need to super serve them. And as I'm super serving them, something will raise its hand and then appeal to all these people. That's how you do it. And that's kind of And this is really smart because as an independent artist, this is where the money is at. On top of that, being independent for his early career has to have made him so much money. I'm sure Kyle's set for life. Kyle hasn't necessarily disappeared, but he's definitely taken a backseat to mainstream hip hop and decided to focus on his core audience and making the music that he wants to make. So if you were wondering what happened to Kyle or where he went or why he disappeared or how he fell off, this is this is what happened to everything you just saw. I couldn't think of an outro for this one, so I'm just gonna have to say peace out. Catch you guys later.